This is a project I've done several times before in uh, magazines and um, also in my in some of my books as well. And it's just a Christ easy Christmas cake mix and it's good for Christmas pudding as well. What I've taken is two different colours of brown, brown clay. In this case, I'm just using the two Primo browns and I've chopped them together, as you can see. Just chopped them up really finely with, with my blade. And just in order to stop the bits going all over the place, pop them in this little dish. These sort of little ceramic dishes are very good for baking things in as well. So they're a really good thing to have around. Um, you can buy them in second-hand shops, etc. So, and here's some um, semolina. Now, just put a good sort of like. Well, you can see there's about a tablespoonful of of brown mix, and maybe a, a teaspoonful of semolina. And I'm putting some accent beads in as well. About a, table, a teaspoonful of black accent beads. These are just a, a set of accent beads that I don't like. They just give extra texture and just a little sort of blackness. So it looks like, um, looks like raisins or currants or whatever. I used to use... Uh, poppy seeds but when you cut through them they they show up white and I wanted them to show up black then I, I just squish all that together mix it all up and squish it together until I get a, a little lump of Christmas cake mix so now I just need to obviously little bits of these beads are going to drop off as you work with it I'm afraid that's just the way it is. So I'm not even going to bother with a with a rolling pin. I'll just do it with my fingers because it doesn't matter if it's got little cracks and things in it. There's probably enough for two or three cakes here. These little tiny beads are going all over the place, so it's a bit of a clear up afterwards. Try not to get them in your other colours, because otherwise they can mess up your other colours. And we're using white for the icing, and we don't want the white, uh, we don't want the black, little black seeds in the in the icing. So as you go along, make sure that your board is cleared up, your workspace. So I'll just cut out a piece for one cake here. If you want, you can use a rolling pin to make sure it's got a perfectly flat top. And that should be enough for a square cake. It's about two centimeters square. I've made that one for a big, biggish cake. Then I've made a mix um, of ochre, ochre and um, in this case I've used cernit. It's ochre fimo and cernit um, champagne colour, and this is for the marzipan. And I've rolled this out fairly thin, but not too thin because I, on a real cake, I like quite a big, a thick layer of marzipan, and you simply cover it. press it down I have this lovely tool and I don't know where to get another one but um, it's called a hockey stick tool and you can get them for for paper embossing so um, you can get similar ones I've not seen this particular one uh, again I've got two of them um, but there is, there is a similar one so just cover it up nicely just as if you were making a real cake really and chop away the excess and from here on in it is just like making a full size cake okay. well 
I say it is because actually I don't think I've ever made a fully a fully covered uh, British Christmas cake. So I'm just guessing. My mum used to make them, of course. So nice all the way around. And then I've got ready rolled some white. And this is white with a little translucent in it so that it's got some um, some translucency. Um, if you make it stark white, it kind of looks heavy. When you're working in miniature, if you want something to look a little lighter weight, you add more translucency. And that's a rule that I carry through everything that I make. And in fact, if you want something to look really ethereal, fairy-like, you add more than more translucency than you would normally. Um, if you want realism, then you add more translucency than you would to the full size item. Um, because as soon as you go down a scale, you need to go up a layer of translucency, really. So exactly the same with the, with the white. I used to fold it on the corner, but I find if you press it like this, you get a better result. And I think it's what an actual cake maker would do. So gently ease that into the edges. Oops, that's cracked. Unfortunately, it's cold here, so things do crack instead of moving. I'll try and fill that one in later or use it as the cutout. So cut away all the excess. Now the whole point of making this as a full cake is that we're going, we are actually going to cut out a big slice. So um, it doesn't matter about the, the fact that I've got a broken edge there because I'll just use that as the cutout. I'd have been a, a, a bit more annoyed if I wasn't doing that, but there's no point in making a cake with three layers if you're not going to cut them away and reveal them. Now, I've got some air under the icing, so the important thing is to push that out before you start to cut it. If it won't come out, you'll have to stick your blade in and let it out. If you have to stick your blade in to let some air out, do it diagonally like that, because that way you can press it back down again without it being obvious that you've done that. Whereas if you start jabbing away at air bubbles, you just make a mess. So I'm not worried about that corner because I'm going to cut it out. Right, so let's cut a chunk of cake out. You can hear a sort of crunch as I go through those beads and the semolina. And that shows your lovely Christmas cake. And you can see the texture. You don't even have to mess about texturing it. A lot of um, cake um, tutorials show you messing about texturing cakes. You don't have to do that. If you've got the beads in, they texture it for you. And some of them will drop out and just leave the little holes, which will, will add to that textured effect. Right, I've got a, a little marble slab thing here, which I'll put this cake on. Actually, it's a little bit ugly, that slab. I don't think I like it very much. Still, just for the purposes of this, of this, um, tutorial. I'll leave it on there. I've managed to get some brown stuck on there. I don't know how that's happened. If you do get any little bits on, those are the places to make sure you cover with uh, decorations. So now we need some kind of decoration on this cake just to make it look attractive. Did I leave some ribbon around? Oh. I meant to leave some ribbon around, but I'm not sure whether I have. Let's have a look behind me. I'll have a look over there. Thanks. So 
Now I've got a little green ribbon here, this will do nicely. So it wants to be about the size of the that the finished cake was going to be. And in order to get this ribbon to stick, because it's quite a thick ribbon for scale, I'm going to have to cover it in liquid Fimo. And then it'll bake onto the cake. So I'm just rubbing this on so that it goes right into the, to the silk. right up to the edge because you don't want the edge sort of sticking out so liquid femo side to the cake and wrap it round and then i'm going to try and make this look a little bit more attractive by sticking it to the surface but I might need more liquid femo for that. I might tuck that one underneath, hide it. Because the problem with ribbons is that, that they never really are the scale you want them to be. Right, a little bit more liquid femo on that end. Fabric annoys me really in miniature because it has a habit of sticking right out and not, not looking like the scale it's supposed to be. Okay, I'll just tuck that round there, that'll do. Now let's put something a bit Christmassy on. Oh, one thing I forgot is if you want some cherries to show up in your cake, my advice is that you use these sort of little shiny red beads that have got a hole in and you can make a hole in the cake and pop the cherry in because it looks like a cherry um, if you pop it right in because it's Looks as if it's been cut across like a cherry. I'll just put one in there for, for now. Right, so now I've got some of my super fine leaves here. I think I'll put some poinsettias on. I quite like a poinsettia at Christmas. And these you can actually cut out the supporting bits of translucent, but on the underneath layers, you don't need to. So I'm just going to liquid Fimo stick these to the side of the cake. So I'm going to use two green and two red for this want to stick. It might have been better cutting it out actually. One of the things that cutting it out does is it makes the leaves move more. But you don't really see these supports because they're translucent. Maybe on very, very close ups you can see them. The problem with great cameras these days is everything's very, very close up. And two red ones. You can get these little um, slices on my website but unfortunately we're closed during December so I hope you've either already got some or you've got some other little decorations in your house that'll do the trick because uh, December is not a good time for posting so we tend to close the close the business
you can actually make these curl as well if you paint them with um, varnish on one side they will curl so they don't always look completely flat but just for the purposes of this video I'm just going to plonk them on And because I like to put a little bead, some beads on them, I put gold beads on the poinsettias. Just get a, a few gold beads and you can use a cocktail stick for this, but I quite like these little, these little tools. I'm not quite sure what they, these are for either. I just pick these things up as I'm going, going around. One. Two, three, four, five, approximately a few anyway. Whoop. Right, so I'll put some more decorations on this and um, I'll show you it when when it's finished. Oh yes, I did forget. It is Quite a nice idea to put a few little slices of cake as well on your on your board. <clears throat> and obviously if you if you want to a knife as well. I'll put a a cherry in this slice. I do like cherries in my cake. To have that bigger piece. That's too much cake. Too much cake for one person. Too much um, marzipan. <clears throat> 